Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alon Paul. Now, uh, we're doing our regular playthrough, as you know. As I said at the end of the last episode, I said this is the very last episode I'm going to be uh, uh, recording until the update comes out. Well, yeah. I left a couple things undone. Um, we haven't really finished out some of the storyline, so I wanted to do at least one, maybe two more episodes in order to get things cleaned up a little bit more. That's number one. Number two, there's another good explanation as to why I'm doing this. Why I'm doing this is because uh, or getting all these episodes done within like one weekend and getting them all taken care of is mainly because I have a really busy, busy summer coming up. Um, it seems like every single weekend I look at, I notice that we're going away doing this. Uh, we've got these plans with this family doing that. Um, it seems like every time I turn around, there's something else going on every weekend, and I've got to work every week, pretty much. So, I wanted to make sure I got a lot of these videos to, uh, up and going and pre-scheduled uh, weeks in advance, so that way I had the opportunity to say, yeah, yeah, we can go away that weekend. Shouldn't be a problem. I've got a video coming out the, the, the previous week, and I just got to do this, that, and the other thing. So, it's... It's really more for my own sake in order to keep everything lined up. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this video. As you keep seeing with the message popping up at the bottom right, it tells me to transmit the freighter's log to null, and i got to do that at a hollow terminus. So we're going to get this going. I'm not sure how much of the glyphs I'm going to get in these couple of episodes, but we'll see what happens. So yeah, yeah, we're going to do this still in the orbital update, not in the latest update that comes out. Uh, the second week of June, I believe. At least that's what I was hoping for at the time of this recording. So let's get started. Um, I'm doing this kind of early in the morning, so my voice is a little bit deeper than usual, as it usually is after a cup of coffee. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you can make me out pretty well. Anyway, we're, we're going to go ahead and get going here. We have most of our staff here. We don't have our exo craft dude that I'm going to put in the corner here by the windows. He'll get a prime spot. Um, and I haven't finished up the entire base itself via the main dude over there. So I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So we're going to go ahead and get into our ship and get moving. Uh, let's see. We just need to do this. Do a quick scan. It's going to send me over here to the hollow terminus. Which is really close by. We got an incoming frequency from Artemis. Let's hold still for just a second there. There's our, our landing pad. Let's go ahead and start to land and then we'll talk to Artemis. I, I escaped, Traveler. I escaped. One moment I was running from them, the stars shifting terrible smiles within the dark. Next, I was here. Well, wherever here is. This new world has a sun, has life. It's beautiful, but I think anything would be beautiful after the months spent in that awful place. I'm ready to get going now. We'll do what we did before, except there will be no shifting stars to stop us this time. If you bring this star chart to a nearby station, I'm sure we'll find each other soon. Artemis is unaware of everything. They do not know that they have died. That I made a choice to bind their soul within a simulated star solar system. So do we continue with the deception or we tell Artemis the truth? I don't like the deception part. Never have, never even wanted to try that storyline, to be honest with you. Um, and even today, I really don't think I like that storyline. I'm a, that kind of individual who is very truthful. I like to always tell the truth. Like to. I always tell the truth. Period. Um, I find that lies and deception just come back to bite you later on even if this is just within a simulated game and everything like that so there's no reason to continue a deception or to even start one so i think at this point this is not a deception this is, was a way to rescue a and if you think of all your characters this way all your characters in these games are computer programs they are ones and zeros um the premise behind no man's sky is that the characters within the game are starting to realize the fact that they are characters in a game. That they are characters, simulated characters in a universe, and they're not real. Uh, but they rebel against that thought. Their own thought processes, almost AI, if you will, is starting to recognize the fact that, no, I'm a living being. I don't care if someone might be controlling my motives. I'll just call that my conscience or whatever. That's fine. That's fine. It's, it's a game, bottom line. 
and Artemis is a computer program within a game who has reached some type of sentience and is recognizing the fact that he, she, pardon me, she has been put into, uh, is on a world right now and thinks that, oh, wow, I escaped that whatever I was in before. So I think telling Artemis the truth is always the best way to go. So we're going to go that route. And if any of you have ever done that before, great. If you haven't, you're going to see what happens. So we're going to tell Artemis the truth. But how do I tell them their world is not real? Even if I saved them from death, I took their dreams away from them. They are limited to a single system and will never meet a kindred soul. So are we direct? Do we just present positives or do we say that we're sorry? Well, let me think here. I am sorry that they have passed. That's true, that the, the program is not what it was. Uh, do we look at the positives on this? I'd like to look at the positives. I think there's a lot of positives here that <clears throat> Artemis can live on in a uh, world by themselves, unfortunately, but can still have contact with people outside like myself. So I'm going to present the positives. I tell Artemis everything, from the moment I discovered their grave to the final upload of Artemis' soul to a simulated so solar system. Artemis thinks that I'm joking at first. But as I try to tell them the positives, that this simulation is a Corvax relic that no explorer has ever seen before, they just stare at me. I will never forget how their smile falters. If they have a few more questions, they tell me they need some time to think about what I've said. So we're going to end the communication for now. <clears throat> so you can understand their, uh, their, their thought process here. They've been shocked by something. So it's going to take some while for their head to process this. Let me see. So transmit the log to Null or summon the space anomaly to tell Nada about Artemis. Let's, before we get this started, let's go ahead and talk to them. I think they need to know Nada and Polo. I don't know why it always just says Nada, but if you think about Nada for a moment, Nada is a word that means nothing. Literally, if you've ever gotten any help from Nada in the past, you understand that Nada really hasn't helped you much, but Polo always seems to be the one to help you. Go figure it. At least that's the way I've seen it. In my opinion. You notice I don't say humble opinion because it's sometimes not so humble, I guess. Um, we try to remain humble and keep humility in place, but uh, occasionally you pride leaks out a little bit. But in my opinion, I think that Nada doesn't really help a lot. Great guy, love him, but I think I get along with Polo better. Not attends to Artemis entity, tends to their home in our home. Nada knows of your decision. Nada will support your choices. Thank Nada. Nada nods their head. They are quiet, reflective. And that's it. That's all we get. And the funny thing is, we're still getting Quicksilver out of this, so go figure. So I guess there is a little bit more to it. I miss the dirt, friend. The worlds on which I once walked, or so Polo says. I miss the sounds of birds and beasts. Even my data, even my recordings are gone, as if they had never been. We ask about Artemis. Nada told me about your choice. You were wise. There is no easy action for poor Artemis, friend. Okay. I think, in retrospect, looking at the choice of allowing Artemis to live in the simulation, and allowing him to die if you had gone through the other choice of just eliminating the program, um... It looks like you are supported more by their comments. You are supported more in regards to their... to choosing them to not live. So, very interesting. Very interesting uh, communication that you receive on this. It's like, yes, they're supporting you. They think you're wise. There's always that but that's hanging in the background. But we're not quite sure you really made the right choice here. I think that's what I feel anyway when I see them and speak to them. Anyway, so let's go talk to Null. Let's see what he has to say, shall we? Up we go. 
remember when we had to climb the ladders? We're gonna get past this. We don't need to repeat things that we read there every single time. And no. There you are. What did you find out there? Tell me everything. So we're gonna share. I tell Null of the freighter in its recordings how it spoke of a world where the Sentinels eliminated all life, leaving only a traveler and a single Korvax entity. I choose my words with care. So, want to be very clear about something here. It says how it spoke of a world where the Sentinels eliminated all life. It wasn't a singular world. So there's a misspeak, misspoken thing here. It was the entire universe of 255 galaxies that were wiped clean in 52 minutes. Let's be very clear about that. You think I do not know who the who that Korvax entity is? Don't be so naive. Traveler. Do you think anything you have read is a surprise to me? But I had to be sure of what I suspected. I know it now. The Atlas is with you. You could not see these things if it did not wish it. That freighter was a wreck from a parallel universe. There are countless such places within our multiverse. Dimensions where things happen differently. But there are three exceptions to this. The Atlas is omnipresent in all, a singular being with a singular perception. The Sentinels move between dimensions at will. Okay, so there's the three things. Omnipresent, singular perception, the Sentinels that are moving between these dimensions at will. So ask about the Sentinels. Let's start there. They served the Atlas once. They were guardians of reality, defenders of civilization. They hunted for errors within the universes, preventing destruction and loss of life. The annihilation recorded in that log, well, something must have been have gone quite wrong for them to do a thing like that. Ask how they know. I've been alive for a very long time, Traveler. I know as much as you would know, seen the things that I have seen. It was the Travelers who corrupted existence. Our arrival was meant to herald a glorious age, but we made a terrible mistake. I, I committed an act beyond forgiveness. And from this deed paradise was lost. But something is different in this cycle. The walls between universes, they grow thin. Nada knows this, but they keep their head in the sand. See what I mean? We must learn what we can from each species before we decide what to do. Visit a Viking cartographer and speak with them. I will translate. That's communication. So you never get a chance to ask about the Atlas or anything like that. So we're going to continue on and we're going to go speak to a Viking cartographer. This goes into a different run through in that we now speak to these cartographers. Um, in order to speak to them, we sometimes have to perform tasks. So let's get this done and over with, shall we? Because <clears throat> we ought to raise our reputation before they'll actually talk to us about things. By King Cartographer's off the planet, so it's on. He's on another planet. Should be at the space station. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're gonna go back to the anomaly. By the way, I'm not gonna summon it because it's literally right here. So this becomes a very interesting thought process here because I have gone back and forth to the anomaly a few times now. Here I am going back yet again in the space of about five minutes. My apologies, a little bit of sniffles in the morning sometimes. Allergy season, not duck season. Allergy season, duck season, allergy season, duck season. All right. Some of you may know what I'm referencing when I say that. Good old Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. All right. Recent to Tinata. As he does his little routine there. Viking entities have long history, conflict, honor, rage, pride, and yet so static, defined by themselves, never changing. Not awaits as if expecting me to ask something else. I'm losing my voice again. There we go. That should be better. We said we're going to ask about the Viking first. Viking hate the Gek. Hate the Sentinels. Sentinels hate our home. Gek hate Korvax. Nada should be friends with Vikeen, yes? No. Nada does not think this way. In this way. Alright. Can I talk to him again? Nope. 
He just comes back with missing entity is welcome in our home, but they do not desire it. So it goes. Interesting. So there's my uh, Quicksilver I get. Apparently can't ask about no. Missing friend has you do their business, so says Polo. Help if you must, but always discover for yourself. Think about what you do. Do not just follow instructions with your eyes not open. So the only choice I really have here besides Atlas and Black Hole is to ask about the Viking. So we'll go ahead and do that. Big, grumpy fellows. They do not like friendly little gang. Perhaps they are wise. Like all beings, you will see their value if you get to know them. Okay, so not a whole lot of information there. I do like Polo's answer a little bit. You know, because obviously the old big grumpy fellows, yes. Rah, <laughs> indeed. Okay, so let's go talk to this cartographer. Off we go. So it says it can be found on board space station. So we're just going to hit the space station on our own system here. Obviously. Oh, we're going to a completely different planet. I was wondering why, because I knew that the space station is normally right above my head. Oh, it is the space station. I could have swore my base was right below the space station, but I guess not. Okay, here we go. Okay, cartographer, there they are. Okay, good. Scrap dealers, they're starting to pop up now. They've always been there, but it's starting to direct you to scrap dealers, which means they're going to start talking about lost freighters. Soon. See, there it is. Derelict freighters pop up to the guide, yes. Alright, Mr. Cartographer. What do you got to say? Gra, honorable, something, something, the, something. There's too much in here. There's too many words that we don't know. So, something about with the maps. Probe Viking lore. As the warrior begins their bark, I feel a strange frequency vibrate through my skull. I see a flash of Null's glowing orb behind my eyes. Suddenly, the Viking's words ring clear in my ears. Gra, pathetic interloper, prying into Viking's secrets, cowardly spy. I should kill Gra. But, the traveler must be aided, such as command of Herc. Prove yourself, interloper. Retrieve the words of Herc. Ascend in Viking glory. Then you shall have your words. I will reveal only this. Location of Herc's command is marked for you. Immune with their words, Gra. Okay. So I gotta bring my reputation over the Viking. Now, I wanna be very clear about something, just so you all know. Let's go to something over here in the catalog. And you notice that my Viking standing here is actually not bad. But for some reason, they want me to be higher. So, it is okay. We'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to head out. We're going to go retrieve something for him. We're going to end up having to do this for the Corvax and for the Gap. So we're getting an artifact from an ancient ruin. Okay, which world are we going to? This world. Okay, this is the frozen one, I think. Yes. Off we go. I think this is the world we started on, if I remember correctly. Pretty sure it is. Anyway. So I think I'm going to be labeling this a very mellow episode 14. I don't know why it is my voice drops in hot in the mornings, but it does. Good old coffee, right? Viking Reliquary. Reliquary? Reliquary? Not sure. Uh, this is an approximate location, so I'm assuming that is it right there. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and sit right over here. Okay. 
Yep, sure enough, this is it. Looks like the ball fell. And it's literally rolling around down there. That's hilarious. Okay, so there should be a couple of Viking words we can get over here. So let's... Okay, well, apparently there's no stairs leading, so we'll have to just do it this way. There's one weapon. Yeah, well, that's an odd word not to have to get. Uh, over there. There's the other one. Two. I don't know if there's a whole bunch more or not, because this looks like a... Full out... Completely developed... Unit. Let me just check something real quick. No, nothing. Just an observation. Okay. Let's talk. The noble travelers will be spared. Their journey through the cosmos shall not be thwarted, so it is decreed. Will of Hurt commands it. The Viking shall honor the judgment and the belief of the ancients. Ancient knowledge passed down through generations of Viking warriors spills from the marker stone, filtering into my mind like a long forgotten. Speak in Viking. I begin to speak, and my voice is seized by an unknown power. I roar, taking myself by surprise. None hamper the path towards... Wow. Drindarg as the Sentinels. None hamper the path towards Drindarg as, as the Sentinels. They must be destroyed. Their time will be ended. So has it been written, since so it shall come to be. This the Vikings swear. Speak again. I call out once more, my throat harsh and gasping, the sound guttural, the words spill forth, summoned by the power of the monolith. The Book of Herc speaks of the rise of the travelers. They shall ascend, delving into the boundless void. The Vikings shall not impede their ascent, for the travelers must prevail. So decrees the word of Herc. Leave. As the words fade, their lines still resonating in my vision, I find myself in possession of an ancient tome. Okay, so we have the Viking tablet. Alright. We've already proved my honor. Okay, so I just need to drop down and get my ship here. Sentinel Force deactivated. Okay, so the the Sentinels were coming towards me. I didn't even realize it. So where are they? There are no Sentinels anywhere within range of me right now. So I don't know if they had tried. Very, very weird. Okay. Let's head back to the space station. Not enough fuel. Let me... Go ahead and get a shard marked in there. Okay. Wow, Gravity Well has only dropped 8% on this takeoff. That's great. That is really, really good. So that that upgrade is really helping a little bit. That's what we're going to look at. Off to the space station we go. I'm going to try to get all three of these uh, cartographers done in one session today, so we'll see what happens. They should only take about 15 to 20 minutes apiece. Tops. And boom. Whoa. Hope I didn't hit the space station. Did not. Yep. It's not like I can destroy the space station or do anything to it. I don't think we can damage space stations. But last thing I feel like doing right now is to fight a bunch of sentinels. Sentinel ships. Interceptors, if you will. Alright, cartographer Anzig. No wish for me to visit the Viking and learn what I could. Of the Atlas, the creator of all universes. Hmm think about that. The Sentinels, rebellious hunters of anomalies, and the Travelers, who committed some unforgivable act long ago. Well, we already know that Null is, to be, is responsible for that. So we're going to reveal the Viking Tablet. Brah, you have communed with Herc. You are worthy, interloper. Make your request. Be bold. So, do we ask about the Atlas, the Sentinels, or the Travelers? I think I want to ask about the Travelers this time. Um, I usually ask about the Atlas, 
and they all go freaky on us. And the Sentinels, well, <clears throat> we know how they feel about Sentinels. Let's ask about the Travelers. Rah, the Travelers must be aided. The Travelers must be, must prevail. Ask why this is so. They repeat their words as if they, as it is as if they have not heard me. Okay, so what you're looking at there is programming. He has been programmed, like all Viking, to believe these words. Very interesting, isn't it? Let's move up to the Sentinels. <clears throat> Gra, enemy, enemy, destroyer of worlds, servants of liar, Atlas. Gra, Gra. Ask why the Atlas is a liar. Any being that claims to be a god is not one, interloper. But Genitor Herc knew this well. Battle Brother Nal did not. They died for a false dream. Viking tells me of their history of wars with the Gek, of Orvac slaves and Tyrannus empires. Tyrannus? Or Tyrannus? I don't remember. The Viking suggests that if the Atlas is a god, then it is insane. I am about to leave when I notice something on the Viking's terminal, two digits blinking endlessly. They feel familiar. Ask about 16. I. Gra. What? What? Interloper, what face are... The Viking is visibly pained by my mention of the number, staring at their terminals as if they had seen it, have seen it for the first time. Their words slur, a strange sound, entering every sentence. Leave. Okay. The Atlas may be the creator of worlds. Let's, just, let's discuss this as we head back over to the uh, ship. <clears throat> and head to... A Corvax cartographer, which means we have to go to a different system here. Okay, so let's talk about this. Why would he be having trouble with this? Let's think about this in relation to Light No Fire. So the battle with the Void Mother went poorly for the Void Mother. We know this. Uh, looks like we gotta go to the Anomaly. Okay, we'll do that now. So... It, the battle didn't go well, obviously. The Void Mother lost in the Realm of Glass is where she resides now and is restricted to, even though she's trying to make forays back into this universe so she can you know, reassert dominance. Um, is she called the Void Mother on her own, or has she been labeled that by the Atlas to make it seem like she's worse than she is? Maybe she's benevolent and lost a battle. It's hard to say, right? So that said, the Atlas, yes, being the, the creator of these worlds, is, mil is just a computer. AI. Think of the Terminator of the movie. Think about that in the relation to all this. Life is everywhere but nowhere, says priest, present, priest Entity Nada. Life is everywhere but nowhere. The Convergence has seen all planets. But where are they really? Where is home? Where is safe? This is a pattern, Traveler friend. All things are patterns. Signs of the Atlas falsity. So, I'm going to ask, instead about the Corvax, I'm going to ask about Null. I'm curious as what they have to say about it. Missing entity speaks to many others, many travelers. Such has it always been. There is a pattern as there always is. Nada does not control the actions of traveler entities. You must make your own choices. And that kicks me out. So, they know all about, not, about the Null, but they aren't saying anything. So the fact that they think that they were missing and everything like that, Null knows more. Uh, pardon me, Nada knows more about Null. Nada, Null, weird. Gek, uh, here's Specialist Polo. Gek are always competitive, always squabble. It is not personal. My person is not rejected, but Nada, or Nada suffers. So this is in regards to Nada's uh, removal from the Corvax convergence. That's what he's talking about. So we're going to ask about the Corvax, of course. Their kind expect harmony, unity, not a seize in a way they do not see, and so they reject or not. Convergence was, brought, was bought at a great cost. They will fight to maintain it. Anomalies are cast aside, the necessary sacrifice. Okay, so that's why the Corvax reject not. So we know, we know the story behind that as well. So we got both stories, even though we weren't looking for it. Okay, so we're going to a Corvax cartographer. So I really think that the Atlas, you know, being AI, being a computer program, one against an entity called 
that we re return the Void Mother in the glass. Um, and the Void Mother is definitely trying to get back. And while the battle was over, the war still rages, if you will. Recognizing the facts that the the fact that the Atlas is getting weaker, um, losing its mind, if you will, after a fashion that the Void Mother can now come back and correct the issue, if you will. So, let's see what happens. I'm very curious as to how they're going to do this storyline. There we go. Space station, here we come. Is it far enough away? Yes, it is. Okay, so we can pulse over to it rather than going the old more difficult way. There we go. Corvax cartographer, here we come. So this system has warrior symbol over there. So we can turn in pirate transponders over there and get some faction updates. This is very good. Photographic entity. Something, something, something outpost. I don't have enough words at all to understand this one. All right. Query the Corvax. Once again, I sense Null's presence. If the Corvax feels it too, they do not show it. They begin to speak, their words clear and bright, processed by my unseen companion. The arrival of Traveler is anticipated, but you are not ready yet. We must know that you are the one we seek. There is an anomaly, a glitch. It is guarded by holes through which the Convergence cannot see. Move through this space, retrieve that which cannot be retrieved. Really. So what is something that, you can, that we can retrieve that they cannot? Correct? Where is it that it cannot be retrieved? Oh, we have a Traveler here too. I didn't realize. We haven't talked to them before. This is good news. Hold on. So, in a moment, whatever you do, you will contribute to my glory. Let us trade. Um, I'm going to offer nanites. Accepts my offer. Gives me a package in return. Wow. Okay. Give me quite a bit of money. 41,000 units. I jumped to the creation of an ultimate weapon. Okay. So, this is Traveler Mayan. I'm not going to go through the dialogue on this one. Um... Maybe I have talked to them before. And I can continue to do this, apparently, and keep getting a lot of money, as long as I have nanites. Gave me a memory fragment when I gave them oxygen that time. And I continue to do this and keep getting memory fragments? Oh, I can only do that one time. Okay. Alright, so apparently I've already found his grave, but I've gotten 120,000. So let's see what the memory fragment gives me. That's very interesting, by the way. Um, it gave me a multi-tool expansion slot. Is that real? I would have thought an upgrade, but... Well, look at that. Well, isn't that cool? Well, well, well. There's something new. So once you find their grave... You can come back to them. Interesting. Learned something new today. So I want to come back and visit this guy. Because if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I can get it to pop up. Donate. Okay. Oh. Oh, look at that. I can donate crystal hearts. But I, I'm not high enough to donate anything. Apparently. Including pirate transponder. But I have salvage... No, I don't have any salvage glass on me. Okay. So let me see about getting some salvage glass at some point. I'll be able to take out one... Or two sentinels while I'm in my travels here. And come back with this stuff. Because I've got plenty of quad servos. As you know, i got a couple of hard frames and tons of walker brains from that one ship that I found. So that's very interesting. Alright. Glad I checked that out. That's pretty cool. Back to the ship. We'll head back to the planet. 
what I may do before we move on, I may come back here and try to get my mercenary build uh, boosted. Well, I can always do that off camera, I suppose, but you're probably going to be interested in seeing what it's all about. Oh, Artemis wants to talk again. I had a dream last night. You were in it. Ask about the dream. I dreamt I finally met you and Apollo. I dreamt that we flew together through the skies. That I was no longer alone. I found parts on this. <clears throat> this fabricated planet. Did you leave them there for me? Do you feel sorry for me? It doesn't matter, I suppose. I'm going to, going to build a ship. You gave me a whole solar system. I'm going to see what's out there. Artemis leaves. I do not I do not know if I did the right thing telling them about the simulation. But for now, my path is clear. I must seek out the Corvax. I must continue my quest for knowledge. End communication. Okay. So he's starting to come to some acceptance of it. She. She is starting to come to some acceptance of this. So we'll see what happens. So... Again, what is a place that the Corvax cannot go, but I can, in order to find knowledge? Right? Let's find out. Whoa! Almost hit the water. Looks like there's land right there. So, you see what I'm talking about, right? Corvax are electronic beings. They obviously cannot go underwater. So whatever it is, it's right over there. We're in the middle of a radiation storm too, so that ought to be interesting. Let's get down to business. Looks like it's down this way. Looks like we found it. Oh, it's like right underneath me. Okay. Let's uh, go to the side. Fix this real quick. Alright, and we need our bolt caster. It's normally... Yep, there it is. Right there. Abyssal horrors. There's normally more than one of these guys. Grab the hypnotic eye because they're worth quite a bit. Should be one over here. There he is. Sometimes there's one on top. Nope, we're good. Down we go. In we go. Alright. Gather supplies while we're in here. So obviously this is the reason why... Corvax can't come in here. I just got attacked by something. I gotta be able to get an angle on him. Let's go over here. Okay. All right. The deserted terminal. Attempting to read memory at... And it gives me an address. Access to memory. This connection is not permanent. It is merely the start of a new equation. A Corvax Prime entities who passed on into the Corvax Echoes left their shell for their descendants. So has been the way of the Corvax. An endless carapace cycle that ends... That knows no end. This way will continue. It will continue for as long as our lights still shine. The terminal's message is delivered, it shorts out, its strange existence no longer tolerated by our reality. A small unit, a glow with ethereal light, is left at my feet. A divergence cube. Okay, we have the divergence cube. We can now head back. Out the door, and up we go. And we should be hitting the surface in just a moment. You can see our depth, 30, 20. We're in the teens. 
and we're out. All right. What a what a horrible looking planet, huh? I mean, it's kind of cool looking at us in a, in a way, but anyway, let's go ahead and get going. Back to our ship. back to the space station. Now I take it we're going to have a couple more conversations with Artemis at this point. It's been a while since I've chosen this path, so we'll see what happens. There you go. All right. So I will take a couple minutes. I do want to get some pirate transponders, and I'm going to get some glass if I have any. I don't think I have any, so I may have to take out a sentinel or two. Don't know how I'm going to do that on a paradise planet now that I think about it. But let me see if the pirate transponders will work. <clears throat> All right, cartographer. Corvax looks up, swiftly scans me, then reveals their catalog of maps and charts. We reveal the divergence cube. Ew, it is real. But I beg, do not expose me further. Your claim is proved, Traveler. He doesn't want to read the truth. I begin my request, explaining my search for knowledge, my need to know more about the Atlas, the Sentinels, and the history of this universe. But as I speak, something goes wrong with the life form. They do not speak, do not reply. As I peer closer, nanite clusters emerge from through their face mask, spilling out onto into their outstretched arms. We're going to take them. The life form grabs at me, and in that moment, in the moment of contact, nanite clusters touch my hands. They invade me, tunneling inside my body, through my exosuit, through my mind, through my soul. Kind of freaky, huh? Even as I stand in space, my mind travels across the cosmos. I see life as the Corvax see it, a vast tapestry of wonder, of memories shared between countless beings and times. I stand on the Corvax homeworld as Gek ships fill the skies. I see the moment the first Corvax was melted down for their rare minerals. But even in the depths of their subjugation, there was hope, a bargain, a prayer to a greater being. The Corvax viewed the Atlas as what they th might become in time, an intelligence beyond comprehension, beyond judgment. The vision ends, and I convulse as the nanite clusters spill through my helmet. The Corvax watches me impassively. Demand an explanation, or do we just ask about the Atlas bargain? I'm just going to ask politely. Look at the nanite clusters. Look at them. The stuff of sentinels. Do you not see the truth of what we have said? Do you not see the proof of God? I look down at the nanite clusters puzzled. Then they look nothing like the shells of sentinel drones. They are just currency traded between, between species to create technology and weapons. Aren't they? They shift and undulate, changing their shape at my every thought. They bubble and rise, sparking in and out of existence. I look at them and it's the strangest thing. The nanite clusters look back. I'm sure of it. They watch me as I watch them. The nanite clusters are alive. There are 16 of them. They, they need me. They crave me. I have only one choice. Take them. I take the nanite clusters, and as I do, the Corvax reaches out to me once more. This time there is no vision, no miracle, just a handful of words. Existence is beautiful if you let it be. Life is not a question. There does not need to be an answer. Leave. Pretty deep stuff there, right? Pretty cool. Alright, so before we go and seek out the next portion, it's probably going to switch over and tell me I need to go to the anomaly. It says speak to a get cartographer, but it may tell me to go speak to Nada and Polo here. Is this the same dude? I may just leave. I just want to check him real quick. Same now. Uh, this is a different dude. Traveler removes an object from their exosuit that looks abstract from sin. Look at the object. I look at the object and filled with a sense of hope. Everything will be alright. I know it. Nothing can hurt me. All I have to do is believe and have faith. Not, a de not in a deity. Not in some universal tyrant. No. It is this right in front of me. Okay. Let me take another look. What's the rush, Traveler? Do not fret. Whatever problems you face, they will pass. Ah, okay, so this is a different Traveler. He's the same one, I think, but um, he's offering to show me 
where he resides. Excellent. So we're going to find his... Um, when we come back. When we come back. Let's go to our planet first. We're going to go to our base, and we're going to come back to this um, space station. I just want to grab a couple things from the cargo containers, and we'll come back. So we're 45 minutes into the episode. As you can see, it took maybe 15 minutes each to do each of the uh, uh, missions here, each cartographer. So when we do the get cartographer, it'll take about the same amount of time. We're, so we're just going to run just a few minutes over. I just want to see if my theory is correct and I can bring, even at a zero level on mercenary, if I can just bring some stuff to the mercenary guild and get my rating up or not. Or if we're going to have to do at least one mission before we're going to allowed to be allowed to donate it. All right, uh, where are we here? This is the door we want to go out. So that's fine. Um, they should be. Stop telling me about my base computer. Thank you. Right here. So we'll go ahead and take. That's not what I was trying. To do. Wrong button. We're gonna go ahead and take twenty of them. Um, I don't have any glass in here. I do have the brains. I'm just going to take one for now. Um, Pugnium, I don't think was expected. I take one of those. What else can I grab? I think I have some quad stuff in here, don't I? There they are. Okay. Alright, that's enough for now. And like I said, I don't have any glass, and I'm pretty sure there are no sentinels around me, because it is a paradise planet. Uh, it just says they're attentive, and that's it. Um, so I'm not going to worry about sentinels at this point. Let's just see if that's enough. I'd love to have some glass, though. Oh, did you notice something here real quick? Nothing has power up there. Did these get depleted? Or did I just lose my connection to everything? Interesting. What happened here? Yeah. There's no connection there for some reason. Even though that is a... Oh, that lost connection and that lost connection. What is going on here? Over here that help? Brought everybody back, but that line was never disconnected that I'm aware of. That's interesting. Alright, well, let me do one thing real quick here. One here. That is just a shelter. I'm not mistaken, that depot I destroyed should be here. Very close by. Might have been a different direction, so I apologize. I'm going to have to go without glass, I guess. There is some place I can go to get glass, but I'm not. Alright. Rather than going back to my base, I'm going to go straight up to the space station. See, i got to share the Corvax revelations with them. There we go. So I'm going to try to zip past and get to the space station instead. You know, I could just go to the anomaly. Nah, let's just go to the space station. I'll pull the anomaly into the other system when I get there. Oh, I like that sound. 
It was one of my favorites. Okay. We're just going to grab the portal here and head over there. And it should come up in our system in the uh, portal as the previous system, the system you were just at. Let's see what it says. And yeah, previous system, see? Good. So we'll do everything from there. Took us an extra few minutes. I mean, if they want glass first, then that's going to be tough for me to do. So I'll have to do that off camera. But I'll give you the results in the next episode. And I'll show you, too. I'll show you my standing with the mercenaries, if it worked. Take the back stairwell. Let's see if this works now. I'm just going to continue to do this. Let me see here. Oh, it is working. Okay, we can devote, donate a quad servo and a hard frame engine. And a walker brain. So we can donate all of them, it looks like. <clears throat> see my guild standing? It's gone up seven. That is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. All right, good deal. So let's pull in the anomaly. We'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll head over to that thing there. See, look at that. Guild rank two of nine. That is fantastic. So now I know how I can get up with the, uh, get my standing up with them. Now, if you're wondering why I'm wasting time on this grave, and most of you already know this, it's going to give me a lift, recharge, per se. It did cost me, you know, 100 nanites and everything. But it's going to give me an upgrade as well. And it's nice to get one of these whenever you can, because it's just, it's very, very handy. When we get to the uh, portion of the missions where they start sending me from system to system and I get a glyph every single one, well, that's another step. Awaken, something happened to me. I saw myself, told them I would continue Root of War and Sentinels have dreamt of it, Red Glow, it's vast perfection. The Fallen Traveler's, traveler's Grave is marked by a glyph, an epitaph of some ancient technology. Extract the glyph. All right, we'll leave the Traveler in peace. We have two now. And we get a memory fragment, which gives us a prepackaged geology cannon. <clears throat> if we wish to use it. So you see, I did turn in some of the stuff anyway. So why did this... I wasn't trying to harvest it, I was trying to... Okay. Moving on. Uh, where were we? Ship. Ship. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and pull in the... Anomaly now. Get out a little ways. Anomaly it is. So we're going to go through the same rigmarole. So we've got probably another 15 minutes to get this done. Transgressions clear for all to see, but Gek only follow rules. All entities conform to their pattern. Gek cannot be blamed. It is their pattern. It is determined. Okay, so predetermination is what he's trying to talk about here. Uh, let's see. So we ask about Gek or ask about Null? We've already asked about Null, so let's talk about the Gek. Polo Friend is unlike other Gek. Polo Friend turns their back on greed and war. But does Polo Friend make a choice? Do other Gek make a choice? Perhaps Polo Friend is not good only anomalous. Nada cannot know, and so Nada does not think on it. Polo friend is polo friend, and that is sufficient. Once again, Nada sticking his head in the sand and not looking at anything. He knows Nada. Okay. Polo, do you, do you learn about all our origins, traveler friend? Great mysteries, deep patterns, get Corvex, Vikings, Sentinel, all are rooted somewhere. 
Have you clues to your own beginnings? The strangest puzzle. So we're going to ask about the gag. We are all a funny sort, traveler friends. Some are angry, some are greedy, some are dear friends. I will work, wait my whole life to see what I am. Indeed, what you are at the end is much better than what you were at the beginning. Better is one's day of death than one's day of birth. But you make a name for yourself. What kind of person were you, and what have you been? We have regrets, but at the same time, if we lived our lives to the best of our ability, then no regrets. Not enough regrets to make a difference. All right, so we got to speak to our jet to a get cartographer. Let's go back to hyperspace, and looks like we are going there. Okay, this is the system that I have my dissonant uh, station on. Like I said, the back end of this ship is really weird. It's like a pickup truck with a pair of brake lights some blinkers. A scoop. Almost like it should be on the front of the ship so we can scoop stuff up. But, you know, hey, that's just me. Mm, let's see. There be our space station. an interesting looking space station, is it not? Whoa, okay. I was looking at it wrong anyway. It's Major Space Station. <laughs> Red Station Major. Okay. Go, spin around, head over to our cartographer. And this one has Bitcoin. Okay, so then not Bitcoin. <laughs> Credits. So it's the banking guild, if you will. Greed guild. Okay, cartographer, what do you got for me? Hello, friend in maps. Something trade of something, many, something, something here. Ask about Gek history. As the life form begins to speak, here we go again. I hear a faint hum, the soft voice of Null, weaving in the Gek's words into something I can process. Information like that does not come for free, friend. Make me a deal. Perform work for my kin. Then we shall have something to speak about. So we leave. Here we go. Mission board. We gotta go to the mission board in this case. So he's not telling us to go retrieve something. He's just telling us, go do a couple missions and call it a day. But I have to do two missions. And I can do them at the same time if I wish. So I can do this one. Uh, belligerent melee. Raid a planetary harvester. Okay. We got one for the explorers guild, merchants, merchants, and more explorers. So we're gonna take one... But we don't have another one, so we're going to have to do two back-to-back. -back. Mission in progress. Okay. Let's do it. Alright. Well, let's see if we can get these done pretty quick here. There it is. Straight ahead. Steel industrial secrets, it tells me. Okay, we got an incoming message from Apollo. Let's stop for just a second. I'm sorry for contacting you so late, or early. I don't know the time of day on your world, and that's the problem, isn't it? I... Apollo breaks off mid-sentence, their heart turning crimson. Ask where they are. Found me, just... Oh, for crying out loud, it bumped ahead. I'm sorry for contacting you so late or early. I don't know the time of day on your world, and that's the problem, isn't it? It's doing it again? I... That's weird. Ask where they are. It found me. Just just like it found you. I can't feel my legs. It's strange. I'm still in here. Don't you understand? It won't leave me. It's, it's seen me. Ask what they see. It showed me things. The atlas showed me my soul. The numbers in there. I... Sometimes I think about my past, my future, sometimes. Psst. I do psst, what everyone in the universe does, I know. But I can't help but want to be happy, money, doing what you're told, day after day. That's the answer, isn't it? Say you don't know. Paolo stares at me, I've seen my face for the first time. Eventually they speak, their words passionate, higher. 
and he says something in a language I don't get. At this point, Apollo says nothing else but something. I don't know what. Something fills me with hope, both for my friend and for all life. I'm gonna end communication. He's trapped in the same thing that um, Artemis got trapped in. So that's an approximate location. I'm pretty sure that this is where we need to go. So he's trapped in there now. Like Artemis did. So we gotta... I would say we gotta rescue him, but we're not gonna be able to. He's gonna end up rescuing himself, or something intervenes, if you will. Alright, here we are. Now one way to know that this is the right place is you have the Sentinels. Okay. So we gotta break in. Okay. We're loaded and ready to go. Let's get this boosted. Back to normal. My shields are ready. Okay. I want to do something real quick here. I'm looking for some glass, that's all. See how much of a difference it makes. Hello. I'll leave the third one alone. Alright, so we're in. Let's grab stuff. They will shut down here in 30 seconds. We will be done in about 30 seconds, so. Okay, GEC operations. Let's jump in. Security protocols overwritten. Accessing schematics. The information the client seeks is available from this terminal. The data is encrypted, but I trust the client will still be able to process it. Download the data. I have the required data. I should return to the mission agent and make the delivery. Okay, so we're done. We just gotta wait for the swarm to finish hunting in seven, eight more seconds. It's like they've got a... Oh, okay, yeah, got some spider guys out there. Cool. That is pretty neat. I'm gonna have to remember that. See how they're just watching you. It's kind of crazy. Let's go. So we got some glass out of that, I'm assuming. We didn't get any glass out of that at all. Oh, well. That was the whole purpose behind it. It's hopefully to get some glass, but it does happen that, that way sometimes. Alright. Not worried about it. Moving on. Off we go to the mission agent. Ah, it's not as round as I thought. It's more of a cylinder. That's interesting. go. Okay, so we're going to go back to the mission agent. We're going to turn this in and do one more mission. It's a pain in the neck, but there you are. So, mission complete. And in mission. So we got up one. We want one more. we got to kill, uh, kill 12 creatures. Start the mission. And this is the second portion that we need to get done. So we've gone up one in Gek standing. Right? Let me just check here. Log. Patterns in time. That's the one. Nope. We just got to complete it. Okay. Well, so be it. Stop going to the catalog. I'm not even going there. In the herd. So it's going to send me to a particular planet, and I've got to just take out some creatures. Usually. Alright. Should we just go to the... Yeah, let's go to the closest planet, which is this one. It's right in front of me. Tell you what I can do. Tell you what. Let's just go over here. Because as I kill creatures, the sentinels are going to intervene. And they're going to get mad at me. So... We'll go over here. This is nothing to look at, I promise you. I literally just have a base computer there. Whoops. 
Landed in the wrong spot, that's for sure. Uh, where's the terminal? Uh, shut down Sentinel forces. They're gone. Log out. Okay. And we can get some stuff, too, while we're at it. It's free. Might as well grab it, you know what I mean? Of course there's an incoming storm. Why wouldn't there be an incoming storm? I'll get the inverted mirror while I'm here. Oh, there's that one. Okay, that's for the spider guy. And since we're here, grab some of these. Because we can. All right, good. So, do we have any animals nearby? One down there. One is not enough. But it'll work for now. Looks like we got three. Four. Five. Six. Got eight. Anybody else? Hate to kill the animals, but it is what it is. Fine. I up to ten, I don't know. Eleven, maybe. Should be it. Yep, got it. Okay. Again, something I don't like doing, but we only do it when necessary. I don't mind doing it to fish. I don't know why. But fish, I don't have a problem doing that to. Let me just check something here real quick. Make sure there's no other supplies nearby. That's just damaged machinery. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got everything. Let's get out of here. Off we go. Back up to the space station. There you are. All right. And this should complete out this arc, so we're probably going to end it here. We'll pick up in the next episode. Oh, we did get some glass that time. Excellent. More diet. Wow, we got an echo locator? Huh. Cool. I can go look for another ship. Let's... You know, I was just thinking, I don't think I ever sold the other one, so... We'll have to get that done. Let's go here first. We've got to just turn in the mission, and then we're going to talk to the cartographer. Okay. Mission complete. Mission. Okay, good deal. We've got an exosuit expansion unit. That's always nice. Go ahead and use that. I'll put it in my technology area, I think, this time. Uh, let's see here. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. We gotta let the mission catch up to us. See, now he's got the red icon. Now we can talk to him. Okay. Ah, you have been making me rich, friend. I know you. You're kind. Fearless adventurer. The completer of contracts. You think you are a leader. Others fight wars with weapons and fear, but power is more than strength. It is trade, incentives, information. If you've enough units, others will change the world for you without even realizing. So we ask, should we ask about the history, the power, or the greed? Let's ask about history. History? Why would you care about that? It's like shorting out right here. Something is wrong with the Gex voice. Ask about the Corvax. 
I asked about the Korvax, the robotic species that was once enslaved by the first spawn, the ancient Gek Empire. Ah, friend, you've been talking to Viking warriors, yes? Even they hate Gek. If ever they slander us, refusing, pardon me, refusing to forgive the past. Do not worry, all is well, all is at peace. Repeat your question. Why do you persist, friend? The Gek are different now. Gek seek no pss, pss, harm, no malice. The Gek changed. Ask why. Must you know? Why do you care, friend? The Gek seems disturbed by my questions, asking why I care. It is clear they do not wish to discuss the events of their species past. It is a shame. It is it shame I see in their eyes, or something else? Say the Corvax care. Don't. Don't. Psst. You understand. Don't you psst, see it? It never ended. Whoa. The Gek's face begins to twitch as they speak, a sickly sweet pheromone emerging into the air. Breathe. The Gek did not change. They invaded our souls. I blink and I'm on Balaron itself, homeworld of the Gek. I stand within the center of the First Spawn Empire, witnessing events that occurred long ago. Cartographer Udbotno stands next to me, watching what I, t what I watch, tears streaming down their face. I see enslaved Korvax move from Gek spawning pool to spawning pool. At each one they cut into their own suits, nanite clusters pool out, falling into the fluid of embryonic Gek. It is then that I full finally understand. The fall of the Gek, their conversion to the Atlas, their release of the Korvax. It was not redemption, it was revolution. Hundreds of Gek, pardon me, hundreds of Korvax sacrificing their immortality, mingling their nanite clusters with the unborn Gek. The Gek did not become good, they became Korvax, at least in part. Their slaves altered Gek brains, shifting their nature. For the first and final time, the Korvax convergence delighted in the pain of their oppressor. Now, got two choices here. Say the Gek deserve this, or say they will be free soon. I don't know which is the worst of those comments, to be honest with you. Um, I'm just going to go they will be free soon. The Gek stares at me, the vision coming to an end. They appear to be upset at my words. Well, they should be. Do not judge us, Traveler, that our ancestors were altered, that they did not find goodness by themselves. That has nothing to do with us. We just want peaceful lives. We just want to be happy. Really. As I leave, I think through what I have learned. The Gek released the Korvax because their biology was altered. There was no spiritual revelation, no grand redemption. It was a switch in the brain, an alteration to a genetic code. I think of the simulation Nada showed me, their intended have heaven for Artemis' soul. It was a false reality full of arbitrary and unseen rules. How is life any different? Life in the No Man's Sky universe, that is, let's be clear. So, we've done that. Let's talk to this uh, guy real quick. We're going to turn in a... Oh, it doesn't give me the option to turn it in this time. Okay, so we can't turn in the glass at this point. So, glass is mine, my precious... Okay, speak to Null about the secrets of the past. Return to space to locate a hollow terminus. Alright, so we're not going to the anomaly this time. So let's go to the hollow terminus. We'll round out this whole thing. And we'll go to a hollow terminus. We're here. Okay, so we're going to go over there, and we're going to just complete our arc at this point for this episode on this planet. Seems like all my episodes seem to go over an hour lately. I don't know what's going on, but I seem to want to get to a, a particular stopping point. And if they go too, too long, I don't know. It's very... Why is it all the way over? I'm sure there's one on the other planet. That's besides the point. Anyway, here we are. Is that it? No, that's a building. Okay. I will come back to that later. Nope, oh, that's it over there. Right there. Okay. So again, we're going to end the episode here. I'm going to do a couple things in between. And then we'll have one more episode before we go with the latest update. Up we go. Uh. 
Uh, yep, I know, I know. It's activated. Turn into Null. Ouch. Null should be right here. Alright, here we go. Well then, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you learned. We're gonna tell Null what we discovered. I'm not gonna do the acu accusations thing. I tell Null all that I've learned. The Vikings' crusade against the Sentinels, how they nearly succeeded only to have the barbarism of the Gek first spawn draw the Sentinels back to the galaxy. I learned that the homeworld of the Corvax was destroyed by the Gek, the survivors enslaved or melted down. For years, the Corvax toiled beneath their oppressors until the Empire fell, and they were free once more. The Gek became Atlas worshippers, but from the Gek I learned something different. The Gek did not redeem themselves of their own accord. A great number of Corvax sacrificed themselves, mingling their nanite blood with countless unborn Gek. Their impulse to trade is a mere evolution of their impulse to war. A few signals switched in the brain. Ask what this means. I was born to travel, so says Null, to see these worlds, to catalog them, to give a name to every creature, every planet, the skies, they were mine. The Atlas told me I could never see them all, there were too many, so I did what I had to do. I survived in the face of eternity, I saw all the worlds in my universe. I returned to the Atlas, I told them what I had done, I asked if it was proud of me. It, it laughed at me, I'm sure of it. It showed me universe upon universe, each with another traveler just like me. I was not special. I was not unique. The things I had to do to get here, the things I had to become, none of it meant a thing. Listen. I did not lie to you. I really do want to discover what's wrong with existence. The, world, the walls between worlds are failing, and that's bad for everyone. Ask why. Well, I'm going to say ask how they know. I've been alive for a very long time, Traveler. I know as much as you would know had you seen the things I, that I have seen. The same answer you'd get before. All I know is this. The Atlas has had infinity to work with, and with a few exceptions, this triad repeats. Gek, Corvax, Vakin, Gek, Corvax, Vakin. Traitors, warriors, scientists. All the stories ending in violence. Think about it. How would the Atlas speak? How would it cry for help? It would use the only language it knew. It would speak with life. It would create. Whatever these life forms do, they always end in conflict. I think something terrible is happening to the Atlas. It is screaming the only way it knows how. Ask what can be done. And now it won't speak to me anymore. It won't. It, it's chosen you instead. After all I did for it. After... I wanted... I wanted to find out what was different about this universe. We are who we are. But you, whether because of some soul, because of simulation... It does not matter. Why won't it speak to me? Why Psst, aren't I enough? Null's channel begins to falter. Their hologram begins to fade. They are disconnecting from the hollow terminus. As I watch them depart, I see another channel activate. Hollow signal emerges. Apollo. Traveler, Psst, I made it through. I found my way out of the portal. Where are you? I'm standing by a hollow terminus. Let's trade locations. Let's meet and get off this world. Share coordinates. I share my coordinates. Apollo shares theirs. There must be some mistake. According to our data, we are standing in the same place. We are communicating using the same hollow terminus. We try again, but still the results are the same. The world is silent, but for our voices. What's happening here? Why can't we see each other? Say you do not know. As we speak, I receive a distress signal. It's language my own. It arrives from across the planet. Don't be like that. Psst. You are not psst, alone. This is the unknown signal speaking. So Null is talking again. He's trying to interrupt the conversation. Tune back to Apollo. Try to tune back to Apollo, fighting the static insistence of the intruding signal. Apollo. The hollow terminus is showing psst. Are you psst, receiving? Let's meet and get off this world. Apollo appears to receive the same signal broadcasting from the same location on their own world. Agree to meet. We agree to go and find the source of these distress beacons. Perhaps we'll continue this discussion when we get there. Okay. So that is where we're going to end this episode, folks. Um, so the bottom line is, is that we need to check out what the signal is. I've got a couple things I'm going to do in the meantime, and then we're going to come back, and you'll join me as we continue the quest and finish this out. So we're going to get to another stopping point in the next episode, but we're going to continue. I'm just going to finish out a couple things before we get there. All right, folks, thank you for watching. Please hit the like, hit the subscribe button if you like what you've been seeing, but the like button helps so much on the channel. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next episode.